So there are multiple different reasons why you would study computer science. And what's interesting is it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a programmer or you have to um, like, you know, software programming or anything like that. There's, there's loads of different aspects of computer science, which I'll get onto in a minute. That's actually kind of fun. So if you're someone who really likes doing things like problem solving, like, you know, getting into logical and um, interesting sort of problems, then you kind of have the mind as well for computer science. If you're someone who's creative or likes to use things in creative ways, then computer science is also something that's um, useful for you as well. And a lot of computer science um, topics, they tend to be kind of team and collaborative work. So, for example, team projects with programming or team projects with um, like uh, hardware, computer science aspects of it as well. And really what's the cool thing about computer science is there's so many different ways and that you can actually view it. Like if you're interested in the actual technological components of computers, how computers are connected to each other. For example, um, computers are nowadays used to collect and aggregate data and share them. So like I know a lot of you probably have used social media, for example, and a lot of data is collected at, of us and with us as well through social media as well and there's aspects of computer science that look at that there's also computer science areas that look at how people use computers and how they interact with them and we'll get on to those in a moment as well to, to talk a bit about what kind of opportunities you might have there too so um, before we go into what computer science is and um, there's several aspects of highlighting what it is not and um, so there's a lot of fundamental aspects of understanding that um, there's a lot of computer applications out there like um, video games, PowerPoints, web interfaces. It's not necessarily um, just about these components about browsing them or making PowerPoint presentations or playing games. And there could be elements of observ observing those, um, but it's not necessarily what it's all about. There's, there's lots of backbones around that. So like, how do you actually develop video games, for example? What's the process in doing that? How might you, for example, observe people using video games? How do we design for interactions around video games? These are aspects of computer science that are actually kind of fundamentally important. It's not necessarily just about the applications and computers. And it's not even just about computers themselves as well. It's also about how we interact with computers. How does computers impact our society as well? So um, I was talking about how we use social media in our day-to-day -day lives, for example. That's an aspect that's actually quite interesting for computer science as well, because parts of that also look at, for example, how do we make use of social media? How does social media look into the stuff that we're interested in as well to give us personalized information about what we like to do? So like, for example, if we linger over an advertisement for about a millisecond, there are algorithms out there that actually tell you oh, you might be interested in this, so I'll show you more information about this. These are areas of computer science in data analytics, for example, that's actually quite useful as well. And other areas of um, specialization in computer science include human-computer interaction, which it looks at, well, how do you actually design for people interacting with the computer? So that might be, for example, should a person use a mouse and keyboard to interact with a desktop computer, for instance, or might it make more sense um, for us to have something more tangible? Like, uh, for example, um, now that we're um, going into new environments with smart homes, for example, what's the best way to interact with a smart home system, for example? And how do we set that up to make it user friendly? Other areas look at computer networks, like how computers are connected to each other and also computer security. And as computers, move beyond a desktop. So as I said, we're moving into a new realm where computers are all around us, like um, in smart homes. So for example, some of us might have like smart thermometers, for example, in our homes. How do we actually secure those in a, in a good way so that um, our home is like, you know, has, maintains privacy? And also how do we interact with them to make sure that we interact with them efficiently while, while we're at home and also while we're away? So these are interesting areas as well of computer science. And this is the really interesting thing, as I was mentioning in my last slide, is that computers isn't just about desktops. So we've moved from this area of the using a desktop computer like I am actually now to present these slides to computers being pretty much all around us. So we have computers in our pockets, like I'm sure 
um, many people uh, own or will own a smartphone. Um, Hi, Laura, I think it's just accidentally gone on to mute. Mute. Perfect. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. At what point did he mute? Sorry, Ruth. <laughs> About two seconds ago. Oh, okay, perfect. I have no idea how that happened. Apologies. Um, so we have uh, computers as well in shops, for example, that tell us, um, you know, for example, when we're scanning products, when they have left the shop, for example, there, there is different components on that to tell people how these um, are connected. And also even as well in um, these, what's called a smart city context, there's big um, innovations around how do we uh, support vehicles, for example, driving autonomously without having a, a main driver or a car, for example, and how do we make decisions about what cars do in those circumstances. So again, these computers um, are becoming a huge part of our everyday life and they're pretty much everywhere. So we need people with expertise in computer science, not necessarily just with computers, but understanding how computers impact our society and also how and where we should actually embed them in context and how to design for that and how to design hardware and software components for that as well. This means that um, computer science is going to become of a huge demand because it's going to be diverse. It's not going to be contained with one, one discipline but there's going to be huge interactions with other disciplines, like, for example, transport and um, shopping, economics, business, all of these other areas. That's actually going to be very important. And as such, we expect the demand for CS graduates to pretty much increase over the next 10 or 20 years as well. And I talked about the example of a smart city already, but you can see here in this example, um, when you're embedding technologies in a smart city context, right? You have, how do you actually design, let's say, a, um, a system for a smart car? What are the hardware and software components that are required to do that? That would be something that someone in computer science would need to do. But there are other aspects of that as well. So for example, if you look at the privacy aspects of that, what data are they collecting to ensure that, like, let's say, um, the driver is moving the right way and to help inform the driver, how do you collect that data? And also, um, as well, in terms of the person driving, that data could also be used to get more information about the driver, for example, their driving practices. Once we collect all of that data, what do we do with it? That's a huge amount of data. So that's something a data analyst would be very interested in in the future as well. Then we look at the area of interaction. When someone's driving the car or when someone's in the car, how do we design to support effective interaction with the person who's going to be using it or going to be part of that system? That's something that's actually going to be very important for the area of human behavior because people will need to feel comfortable while driving, first of all. And the systems and technologies ought to be designed to support what it is that people need. And then you've got the actual physical building of the networks and the servers that come together and the privacy implications that come with that. So you can see that there's a whole multidisciplinary area here of computer science that's actually really important to look into. And um, I think it's also important to highlight the amount of different companies and the vast types of companies that actually employ CS graduates because um, there's pretty much the clear ones like, for example, Apple, Dell, um, but there are other ones as well that you might not have even thought about. So, for example, banks hiring people who are CS graduates as well, um, and also um, shopping uh, areas as well, uh, as well as air, like um, you know, uh, airlines hiring people. So, what's what this is intended to highlight is again, even now at the moment, there's vast different disciplines um, that are actually seeking and actively seeking. CS graduates as part of um, you know, their team to help them to support um, the CS and the technological components that are part of their work. So within um, C um, UCC specifically, we have quite a high employment rate. So um, as part of our outcome results sur survey here, you can see that we've actually quite a few people um, pretty much uh, already in employment. So in a computer science course, for example, we have 97% who are employed, 
with 3% in further study, which is pretty much highlighting the, like the high demand for our graduates in computer science, both in postgraduate and also in employment. In our digital humanities course, we have 75% of those employed as well in areas um, that span across computer, like um, it, pr computer programming, for example, but also some areas around um, data preservation in, um, yeah, so data preservation in cultural societies, examples like that as well. Um, and within those um, types of roles as well, we have starting salaries here that range between 35K and 45K as well here, because um, these are the, they tend to be the jobs that um, computer science graduates tend to go for, which include Java developer, front end UI developer, technical architect and machine learning engineer. And you can see that um, the salaries even here are quite highly competitive as well for a starting scale um, from zero to three years, which is actually pretty um, high as well. So there's a huge demand as well for employability rates across um, our uh, BSc courses as well as our BA courses. So why UCC and particularly why um, us? Uh, so uh, we, we know and we're very much aware that there are quite a few um, computer science courses across Ireland. But I want to highlight the, the like pretty much the nuance that our program is providing, the diversity of options that you have within computer science in UCC. I'll start by talking about um, the Great Western Gateway Building, which is where um, our, like, uh, like the courses pretty much take place. And within UCC, it's actually quite prestigious across the world. And um, so even if you get hired, for example, within Ireland or even internationally, UCC is an internationally recognized um, university, right? So if you get hired in another country and they see that you have a computer science degree from UCC, it's going to be well recognized and well received no matter where you are in the world. Because it's quite high in the um, world university ranking and it's ranked third in Ireland as well. Amongst our staff, we have international staff profile with, um, with pretty much with staff are coming across all over the world and also with PhDs from top, top ranked universities. Probably wondering why this might be important. Well, it, it's, it's mostly because um, the people who are coming in to teach you, they're pretty much at the top edge of the research that's happening in this area of computer science, data analytics. We've got experts across all of those different areas. And they come in with their newly knowledge and new research, and they're always bringing them in in the programs that they're teaching. So all, of, all the time, our, our pretty much our uh, courses are kept up to date with top end research that is brought on to you, which then you can then bring into industry, which is actually a really huge advantage when it comes to studying computer science because it's so immersive, it's always changing. Within um, our school as well, we have stated our teaching labs and specialized equipment as well. So we have quite a number of different computer labs as well within the department. And we have um, places as well for anyone who needs to work on um, programming and software projects, as well as other um, types of facilities as well for that. Within the school, as well as I was saying, um, a lot of our te uh, teaching comes from a research component that's pretty much kept up to date. And um, I want to highlight these four centers because they reflect on the four different programs which we offer. So we have research in artificial intelligence, data analytics and algorithms. And um, we also have experts in networks, computer architectures and software systems. And um, we also have experts in interactive media and human computer interaction, which basically looks at how people interact with technologies, how we might design for novel types of gestures or novel types of interactions. And we also have experts as well in security, privacy and ethics, which looks at how do we design something responsible? How do we make sure that it's implemented in a way that's fair and also complies with um, like um, privacy and also security concerns of people? And again, all research and that comes from these um, areas are brought into our programs in different ways, depending on which program you're studying. And I'll go into this now because they pretty much reflect on the four different programs we offer. So if we look at um, the four different areas we look at, the first one is the theory and the practice of computing science. 
which doesn't necessarily primarily just look at programming. I know this is something that some of you um, have asked if the if the uh, course was primarily about programming, but there's other aspects of that as well. It could include the hardware components, like how the actual elements of a computer is designed and how it's put together, and also how to design systems that are embedded in the environment around us. Then there's also understanding people and understanding how people might interact with computers, not necessarily just as the physical interaction, but for example, how does social media impact how we relate to each other? How do we design technologies to support effective and um, conversationalist um, com like communication with computers, for example, as well, through speech, through text, through different types of interactions? Um, then using data to make informed decisions. This is an interesting one because, as I'm mentioning, that data is all around us. And how do we design for that? Is something that data analytics, science analysts look at. And then we have what are the cultural and societal applications of computing? So how does um, like how how do we impact like you know design technologies for societal impact? And how do we make sure that we design technologies that are culturally appropriate? This is something that the BA Digital Humanities and Information Technology look at. So you can see there, there, there are different strands of computer science at UCC that look at computer science through a different lens, all reflecting on the different research that we also bring into the school. So if you're thinking to yourself, what, which program should I go into? And this is really interesting as well, because it really depends on how you, you're, you yourself reflect on computer science as a whole. So the lot, there's a logical side of computer science, which is about problem solving and puzzles and thinking through things in that sort of logical way. And then there is another aspect, which is about people, societal impact and how computers um, are designed or how they mediate those types of interactions. And within the logical minded side, these are our BSc courses. So within computer science, this primarily looks at the science and engineering principles and how computers actually work, how they function, how they're designed. They also look at the areas of advanced topics like artificial intelligence and cyber security and privacy. And th these are brought into our um, BSc in computer science programs. Then we have the BSc in data analytics, which looks at this from another lens, which is more about data. How, like, you know, how do we, create algorithms, for example, to support decision making and make decisions based on the data that comes in. This type of course involves a bit more maths um, than computer science and it also looks at how we actually combine statistics and how do we design algorithms to support those decisions. On the other side, we have um, using computers to solve problems. So how um, do we use this in a people context and a societal context? So in the BA in psychology and computing, this looks at how um, computers can be designed to fit more with the needs of people. But not just that, but also how are the technologies that we have already permeate in our daily lives and how does that impact how we interact with one another? I already gave the example of social media. So the fact that, for example, you're anonymous online, what impact does that have on your behavior with another person? Other examples look at designing for novel types of interactions, such as touch, taste, which are interesting ones, but they're emerging ones, <laughs> and speech. Like we, we've heard of Alexa, right? So how like do we design for those types of interactions and how do people respond to those types of interactions as well? Then there's the BA Digital Humanities Informational Technologies, which looks more at the cultural and societal components. So for example, if you um, look at technologies in different countries, what, how are they different and how are they differently used? How is technology used at the moment to keep track of our culture? So there's lots of different um, technologies and websites out there that actually collect data and collect societal data around um, societal aspects. And how, how do we design for those? And how do we make sure that they're used in a, a fruitful way this is something that the BA in Digital Humanities and Information Technology course looks at. So I know that a bunch of you had different questions about the experience that's required. And I want to assure you that in none of our programs, no prior computing experience is actually needed. Um, 
we start from the concept that you're learning for programming and everything from scratch and we work from that basis and build upon that throughout the four years clearly depending on which direction you're going in the modules will be a bit different all of the one of the common things as well is that there's an element of programming across all of our four programs that we have on offer the extent in which that they are delved into depends on which program that you're actually applying for all of our programs are designed to be hands-on so that you actually delve deep into different logical or creative problems no matter which program you're part of you get experience in actually developing skills that are required for industry as well there's elements of teamwork and collaboration as well as part of courses so a lot of um, the assessments for example might involve some teamwork and some element of collaboration if not even there within the labs for example some of the lab exercises that you're part of all of our programs offer a play, pay work placement in industry. Depending on which program you're going for, it will either be optional or it will be mandatory, depending on which pathway you go down. And we've already talked about the idea of employability and um, particularly graduates from our courses. There's excellent employability prospects as well within all of our different programs as well. And there's an internationally accepted qualification, as I mentioned already within UCC. I want to highlight as well. So let's look at and review all of the four different programs as well and just to kind of give you a refresher. So if you're interested in computer science, obviously you are because you're here. Think about what it is about computer science that you're interested in. So I do want to understand how they work, how to design them and how do we actually create the hardware and software components to make them useful within the world. Within this course, we look at areas that involve mastering computer software, also requiring expertise that's required for employment in IT industries, knowing and understanding how things connect to each other. So, for example, when we talked about the smart home thing, for example, when I talk about the Internet of Things, I'm basically talking about things that are embedded with technologies that talk to each other. We actually already do this in our everyday, um, not maybe not our everyday lives, but this is already a possibility. So if going back to the smart home example, um, you know, there's lots of different um, technologies like smart fridges, for example, which are actually smart and are an example of an Internet of Things thing, where basically you can actually text your fridge, for example, to say, hey, what items do I have in my fridge or turn up the temperature of my fridge? That's an example of an Internet of Things because your fridge is connected to the Internet, which are using your phone to connect to your fridge to do certain tasks as well. And also the course involves harnessing the potential of ICT technology to solve real world problems, because it's not just about desktop solutions, but how technology is actually embedded in our overall environment. And it's about the theory and practice of computing, so not just programming, but understanding how these systems work and how to build complex software and also looking at other aspects of, for example, networking, databases, cybersecurity, web and other advanced um, topics like AI, gaming and Internet of Things. Then we've got the BSc in data analytics, which looks at how do we capture data and how do we design algorithms, tools and techniques to make better decisions for people, communities and industry? So this course looks at data and particularly how do we use machine learning techniques to understand and make better decisions around it. Part of that also involves coding and also using maths to build statistical models to analyze and interpret that data. And then combining that and those analytic tools to make that those decisions and then creating them to make, create those decisions from multiple sources. So this is the big thing about is it's really about data, but data is all around us. Data is in the social media that we use every day. Data is in the, like, for example, anytime we're collecting step data on our phones, for example, we have data everywhere. Like we're using data, we're collecting it all the time. And a huge thing about this is the analysis and visualization of big data, which is basically a large amount of data. We're always collecting this data. What do we do with it next? The BA in psychology and computing. So this is now if you're understanding how people interact with technology 
and how to respect those individual needs and values. This looks at how um, human behavior and technology design pretty much combine and how do we support that interaction and understanding how technology impacts our everyday lives and then thinking about those interactions to develop critical analytic and ethical responsible design decisions that support those. We talked about also new and intuitive, more accessible ways to interact with computers and then exploring human computer interaction, user experience. One of the things I want to highlight about this course is we also delivered this with the School of Applied Psychology. So we've got experts in psychology as well as experts in computer science delivering on this course, which is a, a big plus, which pretty much brings this to the forefront because it's one of a kind program. It's also recently got accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland, which means that if you wanted to have further opportunities in psychology, you could actually apply to do a master's in psychology as well afterwards. So this looks at understanding computers and users and how computer interfaces and behaviors affect them, how to design systems and also new ways of interacting with those technologies. So now we're on to the societal and cultural aspects. So if you're interested in that area, then this is a course that's as well for you. So this looks at the impact of digital technology and culture and identity in society, understanding how technologies impact in different cultural um, lenses. So for example, if we were to look at how computers are used in different countries, for example, how are they used in societies in different ways? And what does that mean then in terms of how do we document, how do we like you know design for those different types of cultures for example they, they also as well look at um, what it means to be human as well in the digital age so like capturing culture and what culture means now that technology is embedded in our everyday life not just to capture culture but to be part of our culture as well it also involves curating developing digital media applications Digital media applications are becoming part of our artifacts, part of the art that we create. And this is an important component as well as the digital humanities course is it's about using um, and understanding as well digital tools as part of our culture and how we actually use it to portray what our culture is nowadays. Similar to the other courses, it's about developing research and problem solving skills to help to harness um, and to create like a, a critical mind that's actually really beneficial for industry. And um, also de developing and implementing and updating digital learning plans are actually quite important as well to support planning for the future as well as um, some of the things that you might need to do as well once you go beyond your course. So as I said, it's about culture and society, how technology impacts our society looks at areas of, for example, digital literacy, how does that impact how we um, are building our skills nowadays. So for example, kids nowadays are becoming more familiar with using computers and swipe phones rather than handwriting. So that's a very interesting area as well. And how does that impact how people interact with the world, et cetera, as well. And it also looks at stuff like web applications and text analytics for the humanities area. So um, these are pretty much an overview of all our four courses. I highlighted as well the benefits of computer science specific within UCC. We have lots of different flavors of computer science, which pretty much makes it unique to Cork and UCC and Ireland as a whole as well. And I think it's important to highlight that all of our programs bringing experts across not just um, computer science, but for example, here we've got psychology and psychologists part of this program. We've also got um, people as well here, um, it, as well here from the School of English and other different schools as well within the humanities area teaching and who are experts in different areas across the humanities teaching in our BA program in the humanities and information technology, which I want to highlight as one of the strengths and core strengths of the interdisciplinary elements of our courses. So uh, thank you for listening and I'm open to any questions that you have.